I cannot live like this anymore. And like, I love these little humans more than anything in the world, more than anything. And I'm so grateful for them. And here, they don't even want to be around me. And Blake had said that to me once too, when I was on one of my little anxious, controlling, cleaning freaks in the, like a Saturday morning, probably when he was home. And he's like, we don't even want to be around you when you're like this. And I screamed back at him, I don't want to be around me either, but I can't get out. My mentor and friend, Jen Anderson, she is like, (laughs) I don't even know how to explain her. She goes by a manifestation mentor, but she is like all of the things. And when I actually hired her, I said to Mike, I need to hire somebody who can be a me to me. (laughs) <laughs> and I think that that's exactly what Jen is. Not to, you know, steal the spotlight from Jen, but she is just so open-hearted, so beautiful, so full of possibility. And I absolutely love working with her. We have the most amazing conversations on the weekly. She expands my mind a lot <laughs> into the world of possibility And so I invited her on to be my first solo guest for this week's episode. And we're going to riff on, you know, the importance of having a coach and a mentor and what really the importance of investing in ourselves in women and maybe also like our blocks a little bit on how hard that can be when we're not used to doing that. And we'll share a little bit of our stories as well from our beginning days of investing in ourselves. You're listening to the Revive Couple Podcast. We're Michael and Laura, and together we'll explore everything relationships, personal responsibility, feminine and masculine dynamics, communication, and just some all around real and raw conversations. Drawing from our 18 years together with a bit of sarcasm, humor, tears, a few and lots of love. We deep dive into the male and female perspectives on relationships and navigating the highs and lows of life together. Sit back, grab your love mug, and let's get into today's conversation. Hi, guys. Hi, Laura. I love you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I love you, too. (laughs) It was, like, so interesting to hire you because, like, we had been friends, right, for a few years. I mean... We'd met in person and then friends online. And so it was interesting. So I was like, am I allowed to hire her? Like, this is weird. But I had been watching you in the online space and I was like. Well, tell the truth. Tell the real (laughs) thing what happened there. Because it's like one of my favorite things. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this happens. This can happen quite often. But I think this is a very wonderful example for any area of our life. And it falls into relationship stuff as well. Because I know people have said to me too, like, the shit you share is like too good and it doesn't exist. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a trigger. <laughs> like it does. If I trigger you, then that's something to look into. So yeah, yeah this is how I ended up hiring Jen. Um, we had been friends for a few years. We'd been introduced through a mutual friend yeah. and we'd actually done a workshop together. Yep. But then I think it was like about a year and a half later, probably I was watching you online and you really pissed me off. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm like, she's faking shit. Like, she's too happy. Her life is going too well. And I'm just annoyed of her. And I was really in like the thick of my chronic pain stuff at that time. So like, yep. you were just like almost too extreme for me. <laughs> like, ain't no, no. And I unfollowed her. So she was my friend and I unfollowed her on Instagram because she pissed me off so bad. <laughs> And then I don't even know, it was probably like six to nine months later, because I would check in on you sometimes and be like, even though I'm pissed off at her and I unfollowed her, what is she doing? And then I remember it was just this past summer, I reached out to you and I actually told you that, right? Like I was like, you pissed me off. I unfollowed you. Tell me the truth and don't lie to me because in the online space, it can be very hard to trust people. Yep. And to know that things aren't just fake, right? 100%. So, yeah. <laughs> and you 100%. Were like, and, but I think it's such an important piece to mention for a lot of people. And, like, this is for myself, too. And it's funny because it wasn't until, like, last week that I realized, or maybe it was last month, that the last couple of mentors that I've worked with, 
that's pretty much the same story (laughs) of like, I, but I also knew when they were triggering me that it's because I think it's because we see a piece of ourselves within them that we're not fully living into or capable of living into at that moment. But there's like a part of us that's drawn to it for a reason. And then we're like, mm, nope, <laughs> that's, that's not my reality right now. And so I don't like it. And I know uh, for my own self, and I think your audience will, you talk about masculine and feminine enough, so this will be able to land with them of, for me, it's usually somebody that's quite in an empowered masculine space the last year that I'm like, oh, you trigger me a lot. Okay, I got some other masculine energy that I can work through there that's obviously still a little wounded because I'm like, oh, you're a much, you're a little much over there. <laughs> right. And yeah. totally like our own belief systems as well of like, well, they're too much because yeah. we've made ourselves believe that if we really shined our light, that we would be too much too, yeah. right? So exactly. I see this person shining their light and it pisses me off because I'm not doing it, right? Yes. And I think that's totally what, you know, really made me mad about you. And I think I mean, so if we take that even a layer deeper and we you know, like I'm all about not attaching value to the judgments we have on ourselves. And I think if we took that a layer deeper and went, hey, wait a second, the reason this is triggering me is because it's within me, not necessarily even the wound, but the good part of it is actually within me. And I think for my own self, I look at mirror work as so important, but I also think we get kind of into this like negative mirror work stance where we're always you know, like, well, that negativity is being mirrored back to me. So obviously, that's within me. And we forget that it works both ways. That mirror is also showing us the good parts. So if something's triggering to us in a negative, it's also triggering to us in a positive. If you think of the law of polarity, there's always that duality going on in the same circumstance. So instead of just focusing on the like negative healing part that needs to happen, if we can see the positive of it as well at the same time, and I have chills, thank you for landing very nicely. (laughs) Then there's like, there's, it's just such a different energy that we look at it with and we'll probably unfollow less people. However, if we need to unfollow, we need to unfollow. Who cares? Yeah. In that moment, because it's not the right time, right? Yeah. Okay, so I have a problem right now because I'm already like, oh my God, I could take this in a trillion different directions. So we're probably going to have like part two, three, four, five, maybe with Jen. Love it. And we'll keep it on, try to keep it on track today. But I think you just nailed it with the mirror part for me with um, when I hired you and what I said in the intro about when I, I literally had told Mike, I want to hire a me. Like I need a me. I like who I show up for, for my clients because I am real with them. I'm lovingly, um, well, you know, catch them in their shit because that exact reason I'm like, you're better than this. Like, no, I don't tell them they're better than this, but like, I see this within you, but you don't see it within you. Right. And that's what I really wanted you for, because I was like, I relate to so much and see so much of myself in Jen and I want her to mirror things back to me. I don't want her to just say, you're doing a good job or like do this. I'm like, no, I want you to be real and raw with me because I want to grow and I want you to hold that space for me. So I think that's like, that was definitely my attraction and wanting to work with you for sure. Does that make sense to tie that together? I think so. Absolutely beautifully. And I think to like, just even to touch on the part of like where we had a friendship before there are, that's such like a different dynamic, but I think it's also important to touch on for anybody that's ever thinking of investing in themselves, because when we start our business or when our friend starts a business in this type of healing work or uh, mentorship, or there's so many different modalities out there, right? With Reiki and massage and you know, whatever you want to look at, it does change the dynamic of the relationship a little bit. And there's certain circumstances where that works. And in my opinion, there's certain circumstances where that doesn't work. And I knew right away with you, there was going to be no issue there because of your openness, because of your growth that you've already done for yourself, 
that it didn't matter if there was a friendship there. And I feel like that's the same for any client that would come to you of you are so amazing at compartmentalizing, like you don't make it about you. So if you were working with somebody you knew, you're not going to be like, "Mm," like there's just, I've worked with friends in the past that didn't work out the best. Like I saw it going down a road where I'm like, I can't show up fully as me here because you're trying to put on a brave front for lack of a, like, yeah, I'm not going through any shit. There's still a guard up. It's a vulnerability piece. If we're not able to be vulnerable in that friendship, then that isn't the best dynamic to work together in, in my opinion. Whereas if you do have that already within you of you're like, I'm ready, I'm open, I'm ready to like put everything on the table. Whereas I feel like a lot of people like, you will show me, you will flash me. This is a weird analogy. <laughs> Do you want me to flash you? <laughs> we, there might be more views. <laughs> I look at it as like, some people walk around with this trench coat with layers upon layers upon layers, ski pants, boots, mitts, scarves, all of these things on. And they're still beautiful people, but they're like, they'll come to work with me and they'll like take the trench coat off. I want people that are like naked under the trench coat. They're like, you know what? I might not like some of these parts, but look at it all. Let's look at it all. I'm ready to look at it all. I'm ready to love it all. I'm ready to see it. I'm ready to accept it, surrender to it. And that is completely different than somebody who's like, I'm going to wear a baggy sweater. So you can't see that ripple over there. And there's no shame in being in that place because I've been there. Do we swear on here? Are we eating? Uh, this is Michael LaRock's podcast. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> so, if I drop something, it's okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, you can swear. Although, I think I almost swear more on this podcast now than he does. But, yes, you're very welcome to swear. It's passion words. Okay. Passion. That's your point. That's across. how I look at it, too. But <laughs> I think, too, that, that there's like, I don't know about you, but when I started investing in myself, I wasn't ready to be fully vulnerable. It's I kind of relate it to like I remember having postpartum, knowing that I had postpartum, going to the doctor for the what was it, 20 question test to know if you had postpartum. And I would pass that test to be a healthy human being a million times over. Because in that moment I was in that state and that's I'm not open enough with other people to fully see me in that expression I'm not going to be like yeah so I cried for three hours over spilled milk this morning I'll be like no I'm good yes I'm happy no I'm fine and so I would pass those tests and I think that's the depth of growth that we get out of experiences with mentors or investing in ourselves is how open we're willing to be Mm. I absolutely love that. And I think there's this, so what was coming up for me as you were saying that was like, we lie to ourselves, right? Like we live in this fantasy world of no, everything is great. Everything is fine. I don't need to open up. I don't need to do anything. And I relate to that like so strongly because when I first started working with my very first mentor, he was a man. Me too. And my friend, really? Yeah. My friend recommended him. And he dealt with essentially like codependent women who are in relationships with people with addictions. And I remember Mike and I just had like a pretty good Christmas and my friend brought him up and I was like, no, like my life is perfect. I don't need help. We don't need help. Everything is perfect. And it's not like Mike was a raging alcoholic, but alcohol was somewhat of a deeper issue in our relationship. And it was funny, two to three months, I was like, no, 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 that's not me. No, just like you said, I know how to tick these boxes. I'm good. Everything's good. And then finally, I was like, everything's not good. And I I reached out to him. (laughs) And it was the absolute best thing I ever could have done because I would still be wallowing in all of that shit if I hadn't just simply got real with myself and said, yeah, okay, things aren't as good as I would like them to be. It doesn't have to mean that everything is shit, 
but things aren't where I would like them to be. So then there's that piece of vulnerability, even just reaching out, right? Huge. Making that initial phone call or sending that like first message. That's huge. That's like That's a big piece. That takes courage. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, for anybody who hasn't, if you're listening to this and you've never invested in yourself in that type of capacity, that is the, in my opinion, and you know what, I'll stick with that on everything that I, like, for anybody who doesn't know me, I've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in my own personal growth over the last five years. Is that for everybody? No. Was it for me? 100%. Whole different story. However. Oh, I lost my train of thought there. How fascinating. That's okay. That happens often on this podcast too because of me. <laughs> I don't even have pregnant brain fog to use as an excuse though. <laughs> but before that, well, and you don't have this either, but before that it was like my chronic stuff because literally my brain was like, whew, yeah, gone. Busy. Now I use the pregnancy excuse, but um, we can come back to it. Let's Let's circle back for a second. So investing in herself hundreds of thousands of dollars not for everybody before that even how fascinating I'm just going to share what my first like what this looked like for the first time for me and then maybe it'll come back please do so my first huge investment was actually with a male my very first investment was with a female and she had was a friend and she was a yoga teacher and I knew she had just taken life a life coaching certificate And I messaged her and said, I don't even really know what a life coach is, but I feel, I wouldn't have said that wouldn't have been my language at the time, but now it would be like, I feel really called to reach out to you. And that was my intuition speaking, but I didn't even know what intuition was at that time. So I was like, just drawn to her and I had no reason to. And so I remember sitting at her kitchen table and I could tell she was uncomfortable not sure and I was a little uncomfortable not sure and it was whatever and then she suggested that I uh, meet with her friend this gentleman in the city and I went to his house it was really weird to be honest guys it was like his parents house and it was very cluttered with like a lot of things and I sat on the like living room couch and I remember being like this is so weird but like okay And so it was just like a one hour free session, which now that I look back, I'm like, essentially, he was doing like a discovery call with me in person to sell me the bigger package. But like, I didn't know anything about anything back then. And he and at the end of it, it was like a nice, beneficial conversation. And at the end of it, he was like, I do these breakthrough sessions. And it's uh, $3,000 for the day. And I was like, (laughs) peace. Bye. Like, no, like hard no at $3,000. Like, that's insane for one session with him. That's like, it would be, I think he said like four to five hours and we would just do the breakthrough. And he was really into NLP and inner engineering. And so I was really fascinated just starting to kind of learn about those things. And he was explaining it to me of how I could like break out of my anxiety this way. And I remember like driving through the city, I went to get groceries before I was going home and I called my husband and he was like, how was it? And I was like, it's kind of weird, but like, I kind of want to spend the 3000. And he was just like, 3000. I was like, yeah, like, I don't, we don't really have the cash for that. And then I remembered this other savings account that we had. And it was like one of the scariest things ever to put, like give another human being $3,000. And I did that breakthrough session and we talked about all of this stuff from my past that I was just like, this isn't even why I came here. Like, why are we talking about these things? And I thought it was quite strange. And I didn't really look at it at the time as like, oh, that was a huge breakthrough moment. I am all of a sudden better but now on the other side of that like five six years later I'm like oh yeah like that was really beneficial like super beneficial but it comes back to like wanting that immediate gratification that I wanted to wake up the next morning and just feel like a brand new person and anxiety and depression is never a thing that I will ever think about or say the words again and la 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 and 
that's not what I felt like I experienced at that time. However, it was the beginning of a lot of really cool, big things. But at the same time, I will never forget the street that I was driving down, talking to my husband, saying, I think I want to spend $3,000 investing in myself. (laughs) That's incredible. And excuse me, that's exactly what I wanted to riff on today because I think as women, especially in the beginning of this idea of investing in ourselves, it's like it is a very scary thing. We're not used to doing it. but And it doesn't matter what scale it is, right? Like the amount of money doesn't actually matter. And I'll share mine. I think my guy was like $90 a session or something. And it was, um, I think we'd usually spend about an hour and a half to two hours together. But Mike didn't actually know I was seeing him. And so he like gave me a sliding scale even like he was just kind of like a pay what you can sort of because I told myself I couldn't pay $90, which when I look back now, I'm like, that was so inexpensive, (laughs) especially for the support he gave me. And he was amazing, but clearly he was like just this angel that came into my life perfectly as it was meant to be at that time. Yeah. But so see $90 versus $3,000 and you and I both had the exact same feelings, right? Of I'm not worthy of spending this money. And when I look back, I'm like, I could have easily paid him $90. Like I made a full-time income. (laughs) Like I seen him weekly, I think, but just because it was out of the realm of my normalness, right? My current reality, I was like, oh, this is weird. And I did actually think my sessions were a little bit weird as well. Like same as you, again, there was nothing really that weird about them, but it was just different. Yeah, right? it was and just something I had that never experienced. Weird. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's kind of one of the things I wanted to touch on as well, because we were talking about this before you and I off air, about how we can live in like a few different worlds or a few different realities where it's like, if we continue being with the people we're with, whether that's our friends, our family, our coworkers, or all of our acquaintances, we're having the same conversations. And then when we step into inviting someone new who has more of what we want in our life, whether that is a great business, a great relationship, you know, making lots of money, whatever, happiness, less depression, less anxiety. When we start having those conversations, it's kind of mind boggling because it's like, whoa, this actually exists. Like, that I and I've never opened up this piece of me before because I'm so stuck in these other conversations with yes. other people. And this is what I was sharing with you, how this happens to me so much now, even where I'm like, you and I have conversations and I'm like, my mind is blown about like <laughs> where we're taking our life and opening up to possibility and all of this versus then I go back to having the everyday conversations I with wall. other this is real life exactly right and we're like right we're all so on this side we're all talking about our current realities and that's super draining and it sucks and like yes it's very real it is very real when you have you know a low energetic home and a low energetic partner and a low energetic business and no money coming in yes that's all very real but having those continuous conversations keeps you there and if you want to change it you must open up that conversation with other people. I mean, the people out there having amazing relationships, the people out there making tons of money, the people out there running businesses that they like freaking wake up every morning and they're just like, I can't wait to go to work. (laughs) Not like, oh, fuck, I have to go to work today. That's possible. Just like we started this talk with, that's possible for you. 100%. That's your shadow side, right? It's possible for you. You just haven't really been opened up to that yet. And if you're listening to this podcast, hear me say this, it is within you. It is possible for you. It's ourselves that hold us back. And there's no shame in that either. And don't put that into another shame pile because gosh knows I've done that a million times as well. Of like, oh, I'm the only one holding myself back and I know the possibilities. And know also, I think, too, that it's really wobbly. And by that, I mean, you know, like I was sharing with Laura that yesterday I was in a Zoom room. So an interwebs room, essentially. It was so weird now, right? 
It's so weird. But like as in person with people all across the world, actually, there was a woman from France and Colombia and the States and a few Canadians. And it was really fascinating. And I was really excited to be in this room. And I know for myself that I look at it as pawns all the time. And I've probably used this analogy with you, Laura, of like, I get really comfortable in one pond and like, we're, I'm kind of, it's kind of like, is it a snake that stays the same size, whatever, or a shark? I think a shark stays the size of the container that it mm-hmm. lives in, right? And so it won't grow to a huge, its full potential if it's in this like aquarium that's this size, it will stay in the comfort zone of that. And so this this room was like, me kind of being a shark going out into the ocean of like, I'm okay, I'm the little fish in this big ocean. And I know this, but I do like to put myself in those circumstances because I know for my own self, because I've been doing this work as long as I have within myself, that when I open myself to the bigger pond, I do grow. And it is uncomfortable in the beginning, but I do grow. But you know, like know that that happens at every single level. There's people that I think would look at me or have pedestaled me in some capacity and would be like, oh, she's never uncomfortable. Oh, she's so confident. Oh, and I just want people to understand, I just deal with that discomfort differently. I just go, okay, yeah, yeah, this is really uncomfortable. And it's a little scary but I'm going to lean in and I'm going to dance with that a little bit and I'm not going to make it mean too much about me. And I'm going to like find my edges here and I'm going to play with that a little bit. And there's going to be moments where I'm like too scared. I just want to hide. I just want to hide. I was saying to Laura, like they opened the conversation and then it was becoming closer to my turn to talk. And I was like, Oh no, can I just turn my camera off and pretend I'm not in this room? Like, I don't know if I'm worthy for this conversation. And so I just, I I think that gets missed sometimes is that, you know, at the beginning of my journey, I would say worthiness was a big thing, even if that wasn't the language I would have used. That, you know, like even how we were saying, like, I'm not worthy of spending this $90 on myself. And I would have been so similar. Like, I know it's not typical that one of my first investments was $3,000. But that wasn't like a regular occurrence I was doing all the time. I remember going to a retreat like six months later and it was, I think it was $444 for a two day retreat, including accommodation and all food. And I look at that now, like that was nothing. But I remember being like, I fretted that decision a lot. (laughs) I was like, do I tell Blake about this opportunity, which is my husband? I don't know. Like, that's a lot of money. How can I spend $400? I already spent that money before. And again, the dollar amount does not matter in my opinion. And so worthiness was there, but it's still there now. $444 is like an achu to me, like a little sneeze moment at this time in my life, which I realize sounds really crazy in some ways, but it doesn't, it does not matter the dollar amount is the part that I want to like really hit home with people. And it does not matter the worthiness piece either. Like it's always going to be there of like, what am I doing? Is this the right decision to invest in myself? You know, there was like a year where I spent, oh gosh, I want to say it was like $80,000 in business coaching and personal development. And it was also the tightest financially year we've ever had income wise put those two things together I shamed myself a whole lot that I had spent and again it could be eight dollars it does not matter the amount but that also stopped me from being able to show up in the same capacity and be vulnerable and open like we were talking about before because my growth was like right on the edge like But because I was living in that shame of like spending the money on myself, like you got to own it. You got to go in, whether it's $8 or $800 and be like, I am going to get exactly what I need out of this. I'm going to trust myself that I feel called to this. I am going to like all of these things are going to come up for you, but just own it and know that you are going to get exactly what you need out of it. Trust yourself that you feel called to it for a reason. There is a total meaning behind it and you might not know in that call or you might not know in that whole session you know like I work with mentors usually longer term now for the most part 
And there was one that I worked with for like almost a year. And I was like, I really didn't get what I signed up to do with her. Like I was supposed to grow the six figure business and I'm nowhere near a six figure business. And, you know, she worked with energy and chakras and like intuition and all of those things too. It wasn't really a strategy based business. It was more energetics, which is really cool to me. But in the judgment of I wasn't getting what I needed, I was also shutting out the depth of what I actually needed. And so now looking back, I'm like, oh, I totally got exactly what I needed through her. But in that time, like at the end of that year contract, I was like, no, why would I resign? And I still think I wasn't meant to resign at that time. And that's fine. And there's a place for that too. But there is... I think if you can just go into it with like everything is, <laughs> I'm going to swear here, everything is fucking working out for me all of the time, that will take you so far. It, it Don't put the expectation of what it's supposed to look like. And so I, I imagine people might come in to work with you and Mike or just you or just Mike or whatever that looks like and be like, I'm going to have the best relationship in three months from now, because I'm, you're putting so much pressure on that relationship between you and Laura and Mike or whatever that dynamic looks like, or your partner, if you're in it together. And that's going to take away half the experience from it, because there's way too much pressure on it. Whereas if you go into every session or week or call or training with like, I'm going to get exactly what I need out of this, you're going to see a lot more results a lot quicker. Yes. And that comes back to what we were talking about where we are just, we don't know what we don't know. Right. <laughs> and so having these conversations, the reason we hire the mentor yeah. is to help us discover the things that we don't know that we don't know, because fuck, there is a world of possibility out there. Like I used to lay in bed at night, crying myself to sleeping, like yeah. while my husband was like out and I was like, how did I get here and shaming myself and beating myself up? And in, if I didn't invest that whopping $90 <laughs> with my mentor, <laughs> I don't know where I would be. I'd probably be in another relationship doing the same thing over and over again, because that pattern would have obviously followed me wherever yeah. I went. And he opened my eyes up to so much more possibility within myself, which then drastically changed my relationship. But I think just that piece of, yeah, I love that going in with no expectations, because there is this saying where it's like, I didn't get what I wanted, but I got what I needed. Yes. Right. And that can apply to so many things in life. So, so many things many. I can tell like, a million stories on that. An but hour of that. <laughs> I know, right? Like right away, it's like ping, ping. I have like all these ideas coming forth. But another thing that I was thinking of when you were talking about that was how isn't it interesting in today's society and culture that we place so much value on things that we can see? So we could spend, well, let's use my analogy, um, $90 to go for supper on Friday night, which is minor, like, and that's probably a minimum amount, right? By the time you have your steak and your meal, like, or our drink. Yeah. But yet to spend $90 on myself was like crazy. Or if we used your example, like $3,000 to buy, what's in the realm of $3,000? A couch. Yep. No big deal because this is a physical thing that we're going to have in our life for the next 10 years, five years, whatever, till the kids spill some shit on it and it looks like shit and we get a new one. But because we can't actually see this transformation right away, as you were saying, yep. it's like, is it real? Exactly. Right? I could be faking it. Is it real? But the actual reality of that is like that $3,000 investment within ourselves or that $90 investment within ourselves is going to take us way further than supper, yeah. way further than a couch, longer too, right? And it's going to compound and we're going to open up new opportunities. And we don't even know what it's going to open up because of that moment of courage, yeah. right? And being vulnerable. So and I just think it's interesting to note that in today's world that it's like, can't see it, but it's not real. Um, I used to, this really landed for me a couple of years ago and it was a mentor had said to me, I think I was talking about people investing with me and what their ROI would be, like what their return on investment would be. And he said to me, what about the ripple of impact as an ROI instead? And I was like, 
boom, mic drop. And so right. when you're invest, even when I'm investing in myself of like taking that expectation off of what it's supposed to look like, what the transformation is meant to be, because I think we can, on our live yesterday, we were talking about, you can only heal as many layers back as you're like physically able to do or mentally, emotionally, spiritually able to do at one time. And then there becomes a place where you can go a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper, but you can't do it all in one shot typically in my opinion. Um, but there's like this, when we drop into that, like everything is working out for me and that the ripple of impact of what I'm doing for myself right here. Like when I look back at that $3,000 extremely well spent now, um, you know, I could have done a trip. Let's say I could have went, me and my husband could have went somewhere hot for a week for $3,000, which is also amazing money to invest in. For the record, I'm not saying don't do that, but I actually, I'm going to flip it to this because I remember like one of my largest investments at the time being 12,000 US dollars. And so it was about, I don't know, 15, 16,000 Canadian. And I was all in and I knew I was all in and I was so excited. I had no idea how all the money was going to come together. I didn't have that much cash, obviously at all, but I knew I like felt so drawn to working with this mentor. And I remember telling Blake, <laughs> he was just like, oh, <laughs> okay. He, he could tell that I was like, I'm all in. So like, it, it, we have a very different relationship where like, I kn- I've been investing in myself long enough that like, I don't question the amount in, I'm investing in myself because I know the ROI long term now. But at that time, I didn't even fully, the, we could have bought a car for that amount. Like, totally could have bought a vehicle (laughs) totally could have put that money in savings for my kids education someday or retirement or all of these things but I've known within myself that like the ripple of that of whatever the investment is plays out so like literally think of a pebble dropping in the water and how big of a ripple that creates and I look at every single dollar I kind of look at like picking up, you know, the pea gravel at like a playground. Those are all the investments I've made in myself. And I just huck them into the lake and see how many ripples are there. And I'm like, oh, we're good. We're totally good. Like that is a hundred percent worth it because I just scattered that whole pond with a ripple effect. That is so cool. Okay. I have to share this. And you know, if you as well, if some of you may have listened to our live, we did before we recorded this today, we had so many like interesting analogies <laughs> in the in the aspect of creating this um, ripple effect in a real life experience I just like had this visual as you were talking and I'm thinking about myself which then ripples into you so I used to cry to myself to sleep at night not every single night but sometimes about my relationship and just feel kind of awful in that yep. but I spent $90 I had the courage I spent $90 that I could have, as you just said, put away in my savings instead or whatever, saved for a rainy day, went on a shopping trip. But I spent that, I invested that in myself. Because of that, I became more confident. I loved myself deeper. That transformed my relationship. And then I didn't spend thousands of dollars on a uh, divorce. So that was good. That's true. Um, so, right. And that would have been acceptable to spend thousands of dollars on a divorce, but $90 on a coaching session. Whoa, that was a lot. Um, (laughs) Perspective. So true. Right? Right? Uh, Mike and I wouldn't have obviously like traveled to England and had the experience that we did living out there for two years, come home, have our children um, start this podcast. You wouldn't be listening to this. You and I wouldn't be sitting here right now. We wouldn't be listening to this. But most importantly... I wouldn't have started the work that I'm doing to help other women in similar situations, which then created their own ripple effect of what's happening within their families and their lives and their careers, right? And so then now we turn this into you. I mean, I'm sure I could probably um, riff on so many more aspects of the ripple effect of, of that. I mean, and I will say one more. Um, changing intergenerational things for our kids, which is like huge for me. All the patterns, all the beliefs going to be so different for our kids than it was for Mike and I. But anyways, then, okay, now let's like categorize you over here. If you didn't invest that $3,000, 
you wouldn't be where you are today. I wouldn't have hired you. You wouldn't help me reach more women <laughs> and affect more homes, affect yes. more relationships, more fil- uh, children's futures. And so I just love like the intermeshing of this now Yeah, where because we have that moment of courage, we have that vulnerability, we have that like you don't even need to think you're worthy to invest in yourself. You just have to have a moment of courage. Five seconds of courage. Is that what it is? It's five seconds, right? Yeah. Um, so five seconds of courage to invest in yourself to change your reality with zero expectations, but just create change. And you have no idea the people that you're going to cross paths with, the people that you're going to help transform their lives. Right. And it doesn't mean you have to become a coach or anything, but even like your day job by being a happier person, you're sharing that ripple effect with someone who then is sharing that with someone. And I just love to start like actual visualizing. And I think this is great for women who like have a hard time investing in themselves. Yeah. I think we need to learn to make it about ourselves and be okay with making it about ourselves. But at the same time, if we're not quite ready to go there yet, we can think about other people, right? Like how will this, me doing my work, affect other people? And that can make the decision a little bit easier too, That was right? the whole reason I did that 3000 because I saw how my anxiety was really affecting my children. Yeah. I like remember being in the porch getting ready for school. I only had one in school, I believe, at that time. The other one might have been preschool, but like getting one out the door and I had the other two there and I was yelling. I am not proud of this, but I was yelling and I was upset and I was frustrated by time and I was like you got to get your shit together essentially. I probably didn't say it that way. I would have said it kinder, but my voice was elevated and I was like blowing up inside. And I knew I had to do something for my kids. I did not, um, I didn't have like a horrible childhood by any means, but I just saw on their sweet little faces, I want to say like almost fear of me. And it wasn't in a physical sense at all, but like, it was like an avoidance from me. And I was like, I can't. I cannot live like this anymore. And like, I love these little humans more than anything in the world, more than anything. And I'm so grateful for them. And here, they don't even want to be around me. And Blake had said that to me once too, when I was on one of my little anxious, controlling, cleaning freaks in the, like a Saturday morning, probably when he was home. And he's like, we don't even want to be around you when you're like this. And I screamed back at him, I don't want to be around me either, but I can't get out. I mean, I'm going to cry. Gonna oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you for healing another layer of that. I haven't I shared that story in a couple of years probably, but it was just like such That totally a gave me shivers. Such a Because low. I think a lot of us can relate to that. Yeah. I, uh. I, I didn't want to be like that. And if I had not invested and not at that 3000 level, I'm not saying that, but had I not invested the time, the energy, the vulnerability, the courage to say I need help. And, you know, I'm not going to go into the depths of this, but I've been on and off meds my entire life since the time I was 16. And I knew that wasn't the answer for me any longer because I just didn't do well on meds either. It was very numbing. Um, I want, if somebody's in that low spot, like just know, like we're talking here about all happy things and like possibility and like how great life is and how great our relationship with our partners and our children are. Five years ago, total wreck over here, complete wreck. And if somebody came across my Instagram right now, I do not feel like they would think that that's where I started from. And they think that's where I trigger people. I've had people say to me so many times, you're too happy, like (laughs) too happy. There's no way you're that happy. (laughs) Well, like I have feelings too, but like I'm pretty happy. Yeah. (laughs) However, I've done the work to get here to have all of, to have all these feelings. And I still have down days too, of course, we're all human, but just know that if that is the depths of your soul, that you're just like, I am not, I didn't feel connected to my partner. I didn't feel connected to my children. I did not feel connected to myself, which was not part of my language at that time at all. But that's what it was. I was not connected to myself. And I think that's what drives like people like you and me that were like, "Ah, yeah, you can feel a lot better. 
<laughs> yeah. And we've been in your shoes. It's not like we just, you know, went to school for this and read a book and we're like, okay, here. It's like, no, I've literally felt the things that you're feeling. And now I'm on the other side. So I don't just lie to you when I say it can be this good. Yeah. Okay. That reminds me of one last thing let's talk about on this episode and then let's shut her down and we'll <laughs> save it for part two sometime. <laughs> Maybe next week. Um, so just the same as we we're talking about investing, you know, when things are rock bottom or um, putting, placing, what am I trying to say here? How about I don't even try to relate it to that? Let's just say what I was thinking as you were talking. Why do you think as well, as women, we think we have to reach that rock bottom oh, yeah. before things get better? Like if things are okay right now. We're going to do, do, do next episode. Yes. Okay. Because this is definitely like, just give us one thing, one thing that you think in that realm. And then I'll, then we'll shut her down because yes, I know that that's a huge topic, but we're so trained to believe that things have to reach a rock bottom. Things have to be shitty. And I think like the coaching world almost even like explore, like not explores, but like really gives that to people because it's like all your pain points and all this and that. So like you have to reach this point and then now there's nowhere but up. But why can't life be good, but then explore it being better? Like if my relationship with my husband is good, I mean, it could always be amazing, right? And what's the ripple effect of that? Exactly. So anyways, I just think that a lot of us think we have to reach a rock bottom. Like we have to be yelling at our kids. We have to be crying ourselves to sleep at night. And then we look at our type of work uh, or people like you and I, and we're like, oh, well, things aren't that bad. I don't need to do it. True. But things so can always true. And be better. You know, it, even in my business, I like, so I started helping people with anxiety in the beginning. That was like totally where I started and I wanted to. And then I realized that I don't want to deal with that rock bottom anymore because my soul was calling for more. And, but I'll ask you this question. Who do you know that you saw in real life make a big change from not having a smackdown, a rock bottom of some sort, right? So like I think of illness makes, brings lots of changes, like big illness, tragedy of some sort, car accidents, deaths, uh, all those things, right? It's just not relationship the norm failing that we see. Yeah, divorce, um, separation, whatever that looks like. There's always some nasty sort of breakups. Loss. Like, yeah, there is a loss mm-hmm. that's involved before the the trajectory changes for the up. And really, in this last year, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa! I just had this conversation with a one to one yesterday, actually, and she's like, well, I wouldn't be able to do Voxer coaching if I hadn't have been working with you for a year before that. And I was like, yeah that's the point. Like, I want to work with people that have that depth, that are able to go to that depth. And so that's not going to be, this does tie together, even though it might be like, what are you talking about? There's like a level with where we're at that we think we can't go below. Does that make sense? Am I talking in real Mm -hmm. human language? And then there's like... (laughs) We can go up from there instead of thinking that there's like, we're so worried about what's going to go wrong, I guess. And we're so focused on preparing. That is what like the world gives to us in a basket of like life insurance, car insurance, health insurance, certain layers, dental insurance. Um, You know, like if you look at any marketing that's out there, it is. Well, just in case this shit thing happens, prepare yourself. It's always in this worry pain point state. And it like is so saddening to me. Even like the food industry, like all of the things are in this like lower vibration instead of if we like, and this is my hope for our children's future and like our grandchildren's future and beyond there. What if it started at like a happier place? What if it started of like, not worrying about things going wrong all the time and having that rainy day fund and having, you know, like you always have to have all your ducks in a row and you're getting ready for the 401k or the RSPs and the RESPs. And, you know, like when I started having kids, I remember that like, it was like 
you have to start saving for their education right now. My dad's like, whoa, okay, all right. And so like my older two have RESPs and my second or my third does not because I'm like, I'm not going to need that at that point. Like, <laughs> it's, like it's such a lack yeah. mentality that we start so much with a lot of those. So much preparing for the lack mm-hmm. to anticipate happening instead of focusing your mindset on elevating to a greater reality, right? And putting that same energy that you would put into the lack and preparation into the expansion and creation, exactly. right? Exactly. If we could put even half the amount of energy into our expansion and our growth and the possibility of things getting better that we do put it into safeguarding ourselves in some capacity, like there will be, I've shared this with you a lot of like, I have clients that have like millions of dollars in the bank. And then I have clients that have like a hundred dollars in the bank. The frequency that they run at is all the same frequency of like, they come to work with me because they're in a place of lack in some area of their life, which looks like not enough. I'm not worthy enough. There isn't enough. I'm not doing enough. I don't feel like I'm enough. My relationship's not enough. My love's not enough. (laughs) You can go on and on and on there. Yeah. And I was just going to say with all of that, perspective and safety are relative to every person. So you just said that, right? And also my rock bottom would be different than your rock bottom and my neighbor's rock bottom and my other person's rock bottom, right? So it's super interesting. It's just so interesting. But yeah, let's end it here. We can talk about this on another podcast for sure. (laughs) Yeah, actually, let's do that. Let's like, let's do another episode together where we can sink into like the opposite of lack, desires, creating the life that you want from no matter where you're at. All right. All chills. Let's okay. do it. Okay. Let's do that. So thank you for jamming with us. I know we are like 30, 45 minutes and we're almost at an hour, but um, I know that there's tons of value in here. And so thank you for joining me. We'll do this again. Thank and if you. anyone wants to find you, where can they find you at? I am Jen Anderson anywhere. Well, no, that's not true anymore, I guess. I am Jen Anderson on Instagram. Let's stick with that. That's pretty much where you live, hey? Yeah. <laughs> or not not live. I'm not saying you don't have a life, but like on, right. in the online space. <laughs> in the online that's your space, jam. that's where I show up the yeah. most. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you so much. So much love to you. And we'll do this again soon. Big love. Big, big love. Thanks for listening. Check out our offerings on social media at The Revived Couple and online at therevivedcouple.com. Have a request for a show topic? We love that send us an email at michael at larocklife.com or DM at The Revived Couple. And don't forget to rate, subscribe, and review.